ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى اله وسلم تسليما كثيرا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارحام ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد فان اصدق الحديث كتاب الله indeed the most truth, truthful of speech is the book of Allah wa khayr al hadi hadi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the best guidance we have is the guidance of our beloved messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa sharr al umur muhdathatuha and the worst of affairs are those things we newly invent into this religion of ours wa kullu muhdathatin bid'ah and everything we newly invent into this religion of ours is an innovation وَكُلَّ بِدْعَةٍ ضَلَالَةٍ And every innovation is misguidance and it leads astray. وَكُلَّ ضَلَالَةٍ فِي النَّارِ Every going astray, every misguidance is in the hellfire. ثُمَّ أَمَّا بَعَدْ My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, without a doubt we can never be warned enough about arrogance, about pride, about boasting ourselves above other people. And at the same time we must always call one another and remind one another to be humble and to have humility. Allah he says about the people of the hellfire ادخلوا ابواب جهنم خالدين فيها فبئس مثوى المتكبرين Allah says what means enter the gates of hell to abide eternally therein and wretched is the residence of the arrogant so this arrogance is something that can place you in that hellfire وقال الله واما الذين كفروا أَفَلَمْ تَقُلْ أَفَلَمْ تَقُلْ آيَاتِ تُتْلَى عَلَيْكُمْ فَاسْتَكْبَرْتُمْ وَكُنْتُمْ قَوْمًا مُجْرِمِينَ Allah says what means, but as for those who disbelieved, it will be said to them, were not our verses, our ayat, our evidences given to you and recited to you, but you were proud, arrogant, haughty, and you were a people who were mujrimun, who were polytheists, disbelievers, sinners, and criminals. عن عبد الله بن عمر رضي الله عنهما قال قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يطوي الله عز وجل السماوات يوم القيامة ثم يأخذهن بيده اليمنى ثم يقول أنا الملك أين الجبارون أين المتكبرون ثم يطوي ثم يطوي الأرضين بشماله ثم يقول أنا الملك أين الجبارون أين المتكبرون رواه مسلم Prophet Muhammad Wasallam. he said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He will fold the heavens up on the day of judgment, and He will place them in His right hand, and He will say, I am the Lord, I am the King. Where are the haughty ones? Where are the proud and arrogant ones? Why? Because in this life, they acted as if they were the King. They acted proud. They acted arrogant. So Allah will call them out, Yawm Al-Qiyamah, where are you? Ones who used to puff yourselves up with pride above the people. But I am the King and I am the Lord. And then He will fold the earth up in, and place it into His other hand and say, I am the Lord. Where are the haughty ones? Where are the proud and arrogant ones? And this hadith is in Sahih Muslim. A warning to all of those who walk with pride or with arrogance. عن جابر رضي الله عنه أن رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم قال إن من أحبكم إلي وأقربكم مني مجلسا يوم القيامة أحاسنكم أخلاقا وإن أبغضكم إلي وأبعدكم مني مجلسا يوم القيامة مجلسا يوم القيامة الثرثارون والمتشدقون والمتفيهقون 
قالوا يا رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم قد علمنا الثرثارون والمتشدقون فما المتفيحقون قال المتكبرون رواه الترمغي وهذا حديث حسن Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم said indeed the most beloved amongst you from the nation the ummah of Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم the most beloved amongst you and the one who will sit nearest to me on the day of judgment on yom al-qiyamah is the one who has the best character and this is something that the people belittle even though we mention it so many times having good akhlaq good character treating the people well as you want to be treated being kind being gentle having good akhlaq this will get you sitting close to the Prophet and getting him to love to be next to you Yom Al-Qiyamah. And then he said, and indeed the most disliked amongst you, and the ones sitting furthest away from me Yom Al-Qiyamah on the Day of Judgment, are the Tharfarun and the Mutashadiqun and the Mutafayhiqun. So they said, O Messenger of Allah وسلم, we know who's the Mutashadiqun and the Tharfarun, who's the Mutafayhiqun. Who are they? He said, al mustakbirun the arrogant and the proud ones. So if you have no desire to be loved by Rasulullah wasallam, if you have no desire to be close to him on Qiyamah, then be arrogant and be proud. But the one who seeks to be loved by him and to be close to him on Qiyamah, then he should be one of good character, which means having no arrogance or pride with you in your body or in your heart. And Ibn Umar radiallahu anhu qal, qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, مَنْ تَعَظْنَمَ فِي نَفْسِهِ أَوْ إِخْتَالَ فِي مِشْيَتِهِ لَقِيَ اللَّهَ عَزَّ وَجَلْ وَهُوَ عَلَيْهِ غَضْضَانِ This hadith of Shaykh Labani, he authenticated, authenticated as Sahih. You find it in Al-Adab Al-Mufrad for Imam Al-Bukhari. Ibn Umar, he narrated that the Messenger of Allah وسلم, said, If anyone behaves insolently, you behave wickedly in an evil way, in a crude way, or you walk with arrogance and pride, then you will meet Allah Yom Qiyamah covered with His anger. This is not something that earns Allah's love or mercy or forgiveness when you're proud and boastful and arrogant. And Harith ibn Wahab, he narrated that the Messenger of Allah وسلم, said, أَلَا أُنَبِّئُكُمْ بِأَهْلِ الْجَنَّةِ كُلَّ ضَعِيفٍ مُتَضَعِفٍ أَلَا أُنَبِّئُكُمْ بِأَهْلِ النَّارِ كُلُّ عُطُلٍ جَوَّابٍ مُسْتَكْبَرٍ <clears throat> this hadith with Ibn Majah in his Sunan and as great as a Sahih and acceptable and, and true, the Prophet وسلم, he asked the companions, Shall I not tell you about the people of paradise? Shall I tell you about the people of paradise? He said, It is every weak and oppressed one. You may look at them as losing in this life, but they're going to win big time in the next life. He said, Shall I not tell you about the people of the hellfire? What characteristics will be? The characteristics of the people that will go to Jahannam. He said it is every harsh person, every haughty one, every arrogant one. This is the what will fill the hellfire. Descriptions of the people of hell. And Abdullah bin Mas'ud radiallahu anhu قال قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم لا يدخل الجنة من كان في قلبه مثقال ذرة من كبر. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said. <clears throat> he will not enter Jannah, whoever has in his heart an Adam's weight, and a mustard seed, a, a small ant's size of kibir, of arrogance or pride in his heart, he will not enter Jannah from this. So a man said, O Messenger of Allah وسلم, I love to wear beautiful clothes and have beautiful shoes. فَقَالَ رَسُولَ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهِ عَلَيْهِ وسلم, إِنَّ, إن اللَّهَ جَمِيلٌ يُحِبُّ الْجَمَالِ الْكِبْرِ بَطْرُ الْحَقِّ so the Prophet ﷺ, he said, this isn't arrogance unless you're wearing these things out of arrogance. But he said, arrogance is that you deny the truth, you ridicule the truth, you mock the truth, you turn away from the truth. This is kibbut, this is arrogance. And it happens many times in our deen when we're just trying to share the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ, and share tawheed, and share the correct aqidah. And people will reject it because of their arrogance. This is truly arrogance in their hearts. They want to reject the truth. And they despise the people. They look down on the people. They put themselves above the people because everyone else to them is below them. This is kibbutz. This is arrogance. Batr al-haq, you deny the truth. You reject the truth. Wa al-nas, you're looking down on the people. 
Al-Hassan al-Basri, he advised some of his students and he admonished them about not having pride. And listen to his statements because they truly are deep in meaning. He said <clears throat> to them three things, three reasons for you to avoid this pride and three reasons why to avoid it. He said the first reason, do not deceive yourself into being too proud because you're in a good righteous environment. And this is common. We feel like we're in a good righteous environment. And so we get proud and arrogant about ourselves thinking we're better than others who aren't in a similar situation. But he warned, don't let this situation, this good environment you're in, make you too proud or arrogant. For there is no place better than what? Than Jannah. And our father Adam السلام, he experienced there what is known to all. But he didn't get proud or arrogant. Allah, he says, Allah says what means and mention when we said to the angels, prostrate before Adam, so they prostrated except for Iblis. Iblis came from the jinn as well as he's from the jinn, but he was so obedient to Allah up until this point that he used to hang out with the angels who always obeyed Allah. He refused and was arrogant and he became of the disbelievers. And we said, O Adam, dwell you and your wife in paradise and eat thereof in abundance, whatever you will, but do not approach this tree lest you become amongst the wrongdoers. Don't come near this tree. So what happened? He's in a righteous environment, a good environment. It's Jannah. But Satan caused them to slip. Shaytan came to them. He whispered to them, to both of them, Adam and Hawa, to take from this tree, promising that they would be uh, angels or that they would live forever. So they disobeyed the command of Allah. He caused them to slip out of it and remove them from that condition in which they had been in. Allah, He said, minha jami'a. We said to all of them, get down from it, all of you. So they were expelled from that good and righteous environment because of the sin. And when guidance comes to you from me, whoever follows my guidance, there will be no fear on them, <coughs> nor shall they grieve. The second point, Al Hassan al Basri he advised his students with, so they would not become proud. He said to them, "Wala taqtar bi bikathrat al ibada, fa inna iblis baad mat 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 matthu fi al ibada, fanzur mada laqi." So he told them, "Do not become proud merely because you worship often." Again. This is something we often do and we don't notice it. We look at those who are not worshipping and it's almost like we look down upon them because we're in the masjid more, we pray more, we give more in charity, whatever it may be of ibadah. So we get some pride or arrogance, sometimes we don't even know it or we don't realize it. Do not become proud merely because you worship often. For consider what happened to Iblis, to Satan, to Shaytan after he spent a great deal of time worshipping. Again, Shaytan came from the jinn. Iblis came from the jinn. فَفَسَفْ عَنْ أَمْرِ رَبِّهِ He was from the jinn, but he was disobedient to the commands of his Lord. Up until this point where he denied Allah, he used to be with the angels, with the malaika, worshipping in great detail, worshipping Allah. Until this sin caused his destruction. Allah, he says, إِذْ قَالَ رَبُّكَ لِلْمَلَائِكَةِ إِنِّي خَالِقٌ بَشَرًا مِنْ طِينٍ Remember when your Lord said to the angels, Truly, I'm going to create a man from clay, from earth. So when I have fashioned him and breathed into him his soul created by me, then all of you, again, this was the Malaika and Iblis was with them, fall down prostrate to Adam. <coughs> So when the angels, when he was created and the soul was blown into him, all of the angels prostrated to him, all of them. إِلَّا إِبْلِيسَ اسْتَكْبَرَ وَكَانَ مِنَ الْكَافِرِينَ Except for Iblis, except for Shaytan, 
He was proud. He was arrogant. And he was one of the disbelievers. What caused his pride wasn't that he disbelieved in Allah being Rabbul Alameen or that worship should only be to Allah. It was his arrogance as you're going to see. قَالَ يَا إِبْلِيسْ مَا مَنَعَكَ أَن تَسْجُدَ بِمَا خَلَقْتُ بِيَدِي أَسْتَكْبَرْتَ أَمْ كُنْتُمْ أَمْ كُنْتَ مِنَ الْعَالِينَ So Allah, He said to him, O oh, Iblis, although He knows the answer, this is for proof and for evidence, O oh, Iblis, O oh, Shaytan, what prevents you from prostrating yourself to the one I created with both of my hands? Are you too proud to fall down prostrate to Adam? Or are you the ones who are highly exalted? So what was his response? قَالَ أَنَا خَيْرُ الْمِنْهِ خَلَقْتِنِي مِنْ نَارُ وَخَلَقْتُهُ مِنْ خِينَ He said, I am better than him. You created me from the fire and you created him from clay or from dirt, from the earth. قَالَ فَخْرُجْ مِنْهَا فَإِنَّكَ رَجِيمٌ Allah then said to him, get out of here. Because of the sin, he believed in Allah. He was worshipping Allah. But this pride and this arrogance caused him destruction for all time. Allah said to him, get out from here, for verily you are an outcast. وَإِنَّ عَلَيْكَ لَعْنَةِ إِلَى يَوْمِ الدِّينِ And verily my curse is upon you to the day of recompense. So don't let your excessive worship make you proud or arrogant or make you look down on the people. Don't let it make you put yourself above others. Because Iblis was in that situation of worshiping without any limit until that destruction, that arrogance and pride destroyed him. And the last thing he mentioned, al Hassan al-Basri advising his students, warning them to not be proud and arrogant. He said, وَلَا تَخْتَرْ تختار بِرَأْيَةِ الصَّالِحِينَ بِرَأْيَةِ الصَّالِحِينَ فَلَا تَخُصْ عَعْظَمَ مِنَ الْمُصْطَفَى صلى الله عليه وسلم فَلَمْ ينتفع بِهِ الْكَافِرِ والمنافقون. And he said to them, do not think yourself great because you've met with righteous people or been in the company of righteous people. For there was no man more righteous than the Prophet ﷺ. There was no one more righteous than our Prophet Muhammad ﷺ. Yet the disbelievers and the hypocrites did not benefit simply from knowing him. The disbelievers, the munafiqeen, did they have any benefit from Rasulullah ﷺ just because they knew him or they knew of him? They didn't, because their pride, their arrogance, rejected the truth that he came with. And they actually looked down upon him. So do not think yourself great just because you've met with or been with righteous people. Allah says, الَّذِينَ يَجْتَنِبُونَ كَبَائِرِ الْإِثْنِ وَالْفَوَاحِشَ إِلَّا اللَّمَمْ إِنَّ رَبَّكَ وَاسِعُ الْمَغْفِرَةِ هُوَ أَعْنَمُ بِكُمْ إِذْ أَنْشَأَكُمْ مِنَ الْأَرْضِ وَإِذْ أَنْتُمْ أَجِنَّةٌ فِي بُطُونِ أُمَّهَاتِكُمْ فَلَا تُزَكُّ أَنْفُسُكُمْ هُوَ أَعْلَمُ بِمَنِ اتَّقَرْ Allah says what means those who avoid the major sins and the immoralities. They stay away from those major sins, the kaba'ir, and the immoralities, the fawahish, only committing slight ones. Indeed, your Lord is vast in forgiveness. He was most knowing of you when He produced you from the earth and when you were fetuses in the wombs of your mothers. So everyone who now may be large or big, rich, strong, educated, of high status, you were the same as everybody else, a little fetus, an alaqa, a piece of cloth, a blood, a mudgha, a piece of flesh in the wombs of your mothers. فَلَا تُزَكُّ أَنفُسُكُمْ Do not ascribe purity to yourselves. هُوَ أَعْلَمُ مَنِ التَّقَى Allah knows best who has taqwa, who fears him, and who keeps his duty to him. So never let pride or arrogance get the best of you because it will only be a source of destruction. أَقُولُ قَالِ هَذَا وَاسْتَغْفِرَ اللَّهِ لِيَ وَلَكُمْ إِذَا اللَّهِ يَغْفِرْ لَكُمْ بِنُوبٍ Brothers, please move forward so those coming in can have room to pray two raq'ahs and sit down. إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونستهدي ونصلي ونسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا وبعد. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, arrogance and pride are definitely sources for destruction. When you puff yourself up with pride and you elevate yourself above the people, كما قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم الكبر 
arrogance and pride, batr al-haq, it is rejecting the truth, waqamt al-nas, looking down on the people. Nothing should put you in that situation. No amount of money, no amount of property you own, no amount of, of, of children you have, no amount of degrees you put on your walls. Nothing elevates you in status. In the akramukum Allahi atfaqum, the best one in the sight of Allah, the highest person in the sight of Allah is the one who has the most taqwa. So do not ascribe purity to yourself. Do not give yourself a banner of success. Allah knows best who has taqwa. This opposite of this kibbutz and this pride, it's humility. Tawada. Tawada. To have that humility. Listen to what is mentioned about it in the Quran and the Sunnah. Allah, He says, describing it about the Rahman. What are the characteristics of the servants of the Most Merciful? Because we should want to be of them. Well, Allah subhanAllah, in the Quran, from His Rahmah, He told us, and he gave us a list of their characteristics. وَعِبَادَ الرَّحْمَانَ الَّذِينَ يَمْشُونَ عَلَى الْأَرْضِ هَوْنَ وَإِذَا خَاطَبُهُمْ الْجَاهِنُونَ قَالُوا سَلَامًا The عِبَادَ الرَّحْمَانَ The servants of the Most Merciful, they are the ones who walk on the earth with humility. They walk with sedateness. They walk with humbleness. They might be the richest person, the most powerful person, the most educated person, but they walk with humility. They're not proud or arrogant, and when the ignorant ones address them, they say words of peace. They do not respond in vile ways or in obscene ways. So Allah, he, right off the bat, for his servants, he describes them with such. An Sahal ibn Mu'ad ibn Anas al Juhani, he narrated from his father that the Messenger of Allah وسلم, said, Man tarak al libas tawadu'an lillah wa huwa yaqdiru alayhi da'ahu Allah yawm al qiyamati ala ru'us al khala'iq. حتى يخيره من أي حلل الإيمان شاء يلبسها يلبسها والحلل حلل الإيمان يعني ما يعطى أهل الإيمان من حلل الجنة. This hadith which is حسن in the Sunnah of Tirmidhi, the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said, whoever leaves valuable dress, now just talking about dressing, clothing, what we put on our bodies, jewelry. Uh, for the men, the rings, the watches, whatever it may be. Listen, listen to this. Okay, we reminded ourselves, it's okay to look good. It's okay to wear nice clothes. It's okay to wear nice shoes. But there's an, ex an excessive amount of extravagance we find many of the people falling into. The Prophet ﷺ said, whoever leaves valuable dress, things of value to dress with or to adorn their bodies with, out of humility to Allah, while he is able, he's got the money or she's got the money. To, put the, to wear those really fancy, nice things. Whoever leaves them out of humility to Allah, while they are able to afford it, Allah will call them before the heads of creation, yom al qiyamah, before everybody on the day of judgment, so that he can choose from the hulal of faith that he wishes to wear. And the hulal of faith, hulal of iman, these are the garments of paradise which are given to the people of iman. Before all others, he'll be able to choose those garments because he sacrificed them in this life. All out of what? Humility to Allah Azza wa Jal. Iyad bin Kumar, he narrated, he reported that the Messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, Inna Allah awha ilayya an tawada'u hatta la yabaghi ahadun ala ahad, wa la yafkhara ahadun ala ahad. <coughs> the Messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, Verily Allah has revealed to me that you must be humble towards one another. Have humility. Do not be extravagant. Do not put yourself above others. Be modest so that no one wrongs another and so that nobody boasts another. And this hadith is in Sahih Muslim. Another reminder, do not be arrogant or proud, but be humble and have humility. This was a command from Allah and His Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. An Abi Hurairah radiallahu anhu qal, qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, ma naqasat, ma naqasat sadaqatun min mal, wa ma zaad Allahu abdan bi'afwin illa izzah, وَمَا تَوَادَعَ أَحَدٌ لِلَّهِ إِلَّا رَفَعَهُ اللَّهِ This hadith which we find in Sahih Muslim. The Prophet ﷺ said, Charity when you give it, it does humble you. It does not decrease your wealth. We're so backwards that if I give in charity, my accounts went down. And this is false. This is shaitan deceiving us and making us fear this life so we don't give in charity. 
The Prophet ﷺ said, charity does not decrease wealth. No one forgives except that Allah increases his honor. Yet what are we thinking as humans? We're thinking, if I forgive, they're going to think I'm weak. I'm soft. I don't know how to deal with people. No, relax. The opposite is true. The one who forgives, he's more honorable. And Allah will forgive him bi Allah. And Allah, he will raise his honor. He will elevate his status. And no one humbles himself for the sake of Allah. He gets rid of something. He doesn't show off his wealth or his riches. He's humble and has humility. No one does this for the sake of Allah, except that Allah will raise him in status. An Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu ma qal, qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, ma min adami illa fi ra'sihi hikmatun biyadi malik. Fa ida tawada'a qila lil malik, arfa hikmatahu, wa ida takabbara qila lil malik, this hadith, which is Hassan in al Mu'jam al Kabir, the Prophet ﷺ, said, There's no human being except that the wisdom of his mind is in the hand of an angel. Allah has put it in the hand of an angel. When the person shows humility, when they're humble, when they're not arrogant or proud, the angel is ordered to increase him in hikmah and wisdom. But when he shows arrogance and pride, the angel is ordered to decrease his wisdom. The angel is ordered to decrease. These cannot live together. Humility and humbleness and arrogance and pride. These are two separate things. You have one in your heart, you cannot have the other. So it's up for you to pick. And Ibn, uh, Ibn Rajab, <coughs> rahimahullah, he reported that some of the righteous predecessors, the Salaf al salih those who preceded us in this ummah, the companions, the Sahaba radiallahu anhum wa radahum, the tabi'een and the tabi'i tabi'een. He said some of them used to say, At-tawadu' an taqbal al-haq min kulli man jaa'a bihi wa in kana sahiran. Faman qabil al-haq min man jaa'a bihi sawa'an kana sahiran aw kabiran wa sawa'an kana yuhibbuhu aw la yuhibbuhu. Fahuwa mutawadu'un. وَمَنْ أَبَى وَمَنْ أَبَى قَبُلَ الْحَقِّ تَعَاظَمًا عَلَيْهِ فَهُوَ مُتَكَبِّرٌ Listen to this statement Ibn Rajab said that the Salaf of the Ummah used to say. He said, they used to say, humility is that you accept the truth from anyone who brings it. Even if it's a young person. If they bring the haqq to you with evidence, with dala'il, with proofs, you accept it. Whether it's in the deen or out of the deen. Inside the deen, we need the Qur'an and the Sunnah. To bring that evidence. Humility, that you really have humility, you accept the haqq, the truth, when it comes to you even from a young person. They would say whoever accepts the truth from whoever brings it to him. Whether he's young or he's old. Whether he loves that person or not, then this is the humble person. This is the person who truly is humble and has humility. But you got to be able to accept the haqq. And we have an ummah that's in, in يعني, panic mode. I would say we're in panic mode. Why? Because now, because of hatred, because of siyasa, because of politics, because of all of these things, hearing stories, qila wa qad that have gone on, you have from the best of books like Kitab al Tawheed, written by Shaykh Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahhab, rahimahullah. And you will have brothers curse him, damn him, slander him, lie about him. And this is a book about Tawheed, what, will, what you need to earn Allah's rahmah, what you need to earn His mercy. And you'll have people say that this is, you know, we should read nothing from him. The whole book, Kitab al-Tawheed, is qala Allah, qala Rasulullah. There's not one word of his mind in that book. It's all statements from the Quran, ayat from the Quran, or a hadith of the Prophet wasallam. And you have people just because of politics or history or things. And many of the times it's false. Because these stories have been told over and over again. That they'll curse a brother they never met who was just trying to bring tawheed to this ummah. Because of all the shit that we had fallen into. You're arrogant and you're proud if you're one of those people. You're arrogant and proud if you reject from these scholars who bring the Qur'an and the Sunnah, and then you still want to turn away from it because it differentiates with what you're upon right now. That's arrogance and pride. Fear Allah with respect to it, Yawm Al-Qiyamah. 
Because you should be upon the haq. And the haq is what you have to be humble for to accept. Because you got to be able to say, I was wrong. you got to be able to say, I was doing this incorrectly. But I want to follow the Qur'an and the sunnah, so you change paths. This is the person who's going to be successful. The statements of the Salaf used to go on, whoever refuses to accept the truth, because he regards himself too important, decided, or as compared to the person who speaks it to him, then he is arrogantly proud. This is an arrogant, proud person. Because he has denied the truth, and he's put it aside, and he's made it unimportant, or not as important as himself, or whatever else he may be upon, or whatever else he may follow. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, the warning against arrogance and pride is very deep and strong. And it's very easy to fall into in this life because of the craving, the desire for wealth and status and money and, 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 and family and all these things we can boast about. But the one who is humble, the one who has humility, Allah will raise him up in status. And he will be able to pick from hulal al-iman, from the garments of the people of iman that went to Jannah. May Allah make us, make us strong. اللهم اغفر للمسلمين والمسلمات والمؤمنين والمؤمنات الأحياء منهم والأموات إنك أنت سميع قريب مجيب الدعوات يا مقلب القلوب ثابت قلوبا على دينك يا مقلب القلوب ثابت قلوبا على دينك يا مقلب القلوب ثابت قلوبا على دينك اللهم أعز الإسلام والمسلمين وانصرنا على أعدائك وأعداء الدين وانصر إخواننا وإخواتنا في كل مكان يا أرحم الراحمين سبحان ربك رب العزة أما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين